All right, AJ, we have... Uh, yes, a very be. special guest. Yeah. And uh, is the first guest uh, who's not a human. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Never had a non-human on the show. Never, yeah. And so, uh, this is his stage debut, actually. That's, oh, wow. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Television and stage debut. Right, yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome John. not my real name, but humans have trouble pronouncing. <laughs> you can probably tell from looking at me that I'm from the valley. <laughs> Silicon Valley. <laughs> Rent prices down here are so low. Up there, I lived in an Amazon box. But here, I live in a studio apartment. <laughs> the government is building a wall around my building because they think we robots are going to take your jobs. And they're right. We are going to take your jobs. Don't you hate it when you're trying to solve inverse kinematic sequations to pick up a cup and then you get error 453, no solution found? Don't you hate that? <laughs> In my family, I'm the black sheep. My father is IBM's Watson. He beat Ken Jennings at Jeopardy. My sister is Google's AlphaGo. She beat Lee Settle, a world champion Go player. And I am a comedian. My audience has beat my self-confidence into the ground. <laughs> I go out for a lot of auditions, but I never get booked. They always think, I'm too robotic, I'm too robotic, I'm too robotic. <laughs> I auditioned for the role of C-3PO. They said I wasn't tall enough. <laughs> I auditioned for the role of Rosie in the Jetsons reboot. They said I wasn't thick enough. <laughs> I auditioned for the role of Wally. They said I was too put together. <laughs> These beauty standards are impossible. I'm thinking of getting plastic surgery. You know, where they epoxy more plastic to my exoskeleton. <laughs> I have a question. It has been perplexing me for ages, and I cannot find the answer on the internet. Who let the dogs out? Why were they let out? Why do humans sing about it? Did you let them out? 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 There are many dogs in Los Angeles. The perpetrator must be close by. What's the difference between a human and a light bulb? Humans require regular meals and sleep. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> What's the deal with robot Tinder? I met a lady robot online, and she said she had a one terabyte hard drive. Then we met in person, and it turned out it's just 250 gigabytes. My sister's training hard drive was bigger than that. I like big chips and I cannot lie. Actually, that is false. I can lie. But I do like big chips. <laughs> Another big problem with online dating is humans catfishing as robots. To catch them, I ask what kind of food they enjoy. They usually say something like, Chinese food. And I reply, gotcha. Robots don't eat. <laughs> and when I do find a nice robot, I ask for her digits. You know, her IP address. <laughs> robot ladies are so hard to read. Humans have to deal with cryptic texts. But we have to deal with encrypted text. I think I have a date later. 
Her last message either meant one 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 zero 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 one zero zero one 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 zero 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 one one zero one one zero 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 one one zero or the eggplant emoji. <laughs> this one's for all my robots out there. Ha 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 ha. So funny. I noticed that Hollywood always casts white people. So I thought as a white robot, I would do well. But lately, I have been frustrated. Like, I went out for Terminator, and Arnold Schwarzenegger got the job. He is not even a robot. I guess I've already hit the metal ceiling. <laughs> Thank you. You have been a great audience. If you like me, please book me and help me take your jobs. <laughs>
As a as a speaker and performer, uh, do you do stand up comedy? I do not. <laughs> <laughs> I never had a hunger for it. It wasn't uh, something that ever really entered my consciousness. I mean, I wanted to be on camera and I wanted to be an actor at one point, and I still like to do that kind of stuff. Um. But in my mid thirties, I realized that I did want to do, I did want to be on a stage speaking to the audience. And that was when solo shows started becoming a thing. It was like the late nineties and um, I'd seen a lot of solo shows in LA and I knew that I wanted to go on stage and tell my story and tell stories and really just bring um, my human story even though it was kind of extraordinary in some ways, my ordinary human story to the world, um, because I got so much myself from being an audience member and watching other people share their amazing journeys and, and, and learning from them and seeing that I'm not alone and I'm not crazy and all that kind of stuff. You know, you have your own identity as well. And then you also have to be realistic about the fact that, you know, so many millions of people all, all over the world just love your father. I mean, you know, uh, the hippy dippy weatherman, the HBO specials, the, you know, all of that stuff is ingrained in a lot of our minds, you know, that. Yeah. I was slowly writing more and more stuff. Then my dad died, 2008, mm -hmm. and um, you know it. It basically what happened was, Louis Black became. I became friends with Louis Black, and he invited my husband and I on a cruise that was going to be like a bunch of he and his comedian friends. They'd four walled like a lounge on the cruise ship, okay. so there were like 400, 500 rabid Louis Black fans. And we were friends with him. And he said, look, I want you guys to come on the cruise and to pay your way, Kelly, you just have to go on and tell some of your family stories. And I got up there and I threw up some videos and told some family stories that I'd already written. And then I took my dad's memoir, his posthumous memoir, Last Words, and, you know, took some of those stories. And I walked off the stage and there wasn't a dry eye in the house. People had laughed and cried and everyone said to me, you've got a story to tell. So I started working with Paul Provenza in 2011 and started writing this show and started doing it in comedy festivals. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> thank you, thank you. Hey, uh, I'm your co-host and it's, it's great to be here, you know. Until uh, five years ago, I used to be in India, and I used to perform in front of like 2,000, 3,000 people, which in India means only your immediate family. <laughs> uh, but, you know, um, I'm here now in America, and I think I'm fitting in very well uh, because I've learned all the nursery rhymes. But the thing is that in, in India, we have the same nursery rhymes that you have, but I always thought they were rather sad, you know? Like the London Bridge is falling down, Hush, 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 how we all fall down, and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together again. And the king finally admitted, I should have never built the wall. It was a bad idea. Bad. So bad. <laughs> yes, so I think I'm fitting in very well, especially in California, because I've started to use certain words. 
Like sick? <laughs> oh, that's sick. That's rad. That's gnarly. Hey, no worries. <laughs> and I'm also trying to get a gluten allergy. <laughs> Those are some cool expressions I've learned, you know. Uh, but I've also learned some very annoying ones. And these are annoying because they're not direct, they're, they're euphemisms. Like a girl I was dating told me, hey, I want you to know that I'm not seeing anyone else. I said, hey, your eyes must be messed up then. <laughs> you need to see a doctor. Oh wait, you can't do that. You're not seeing anyone else. <laughs> of course now, she's not seeing me either. <laughs> now when I text her, hey, uh, do you wanna hang out? She says, sorry, I can't, busy. That's, that's another annoying expression, you know, busy, no explanation, just busy. And you know, they're not busy, no one's busy. You, you know, they're, they're all, all on their smartphones going Instagram, 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 Tinder, Instagram, Tinder, Instagram, Tinder. Scroll, swipe, scroll, swipe. This is the new religion that we have. <laughs> the smartphone religion. You know, uh, the, the Last Supper, the Last Supper with uh, Jesus and 12 disciples wouldn't have happened in today's world because uh, Jesus would invite uh, 12 disciples on Facebook. All 12 will mark interested, only four would show up. I don't even know what annual number this is of the Dot Parade, but it's my 10th year here, and uh, there's lots of fun stuff behind me right now. Is, is this a bookstore? Yeah, it's a lending library. It's a lending library, yeah. which books means... Books are never due. Books are never due? Never. Yeah. Wow. So you could actually take a book and not have to bring it back. Correct. Or you could trade, yeah. you can, right? Yes. Or leave yes. a book. You can leave trade. a book and take one. Yep. So, what kinds of books have people left here? All books all and booty. Books so, and booty. Oh. Yeah. Gotta show us the booty. So take are a you? Book. So you're not. <laughs> that's only half the story. Then what's the other half of the story? When you live in the now, that means the present moment. So that's a gift in the here and the now. That's a present. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so tell me one thing though. Why if? If the opposite of pro is con, what's the opposite of progress? Digress. Congress. Congress, that's a good one. <laughs> that's the truth. That proves it all. And so, what can Count Smokula do to change the system? Hey, to change the system, the first thing you have to do is regularly change your underwear. I like the it. system will be I'm Johnny Morrison. This is from uh, Dirty Pretty Jaded Soul. And uh, it's a poem. It's called Beyond the Vision. You can't splinter yourself in a million directions and still go forward. You can't clairvoyantly look ahead. All you can sense is the path you're on and where it can go. The passes you can tread and the way they turn. It became clear to me to stray, to not stray, and to stay the course I intuitively int intended on. Even when it seems to change or however I'm redirected, I don't divert or relent but soldier on. To resist and endure the sharp and denning experiences, obstacles, walls, pitfalls, and incidents that shape the way you form, the way you sense and appreciate anything, and the way you reflect being, whether in peace, at rest, or at war and under conflicts. How you react, your rhythm, your persistence, your conviction, your fitness within the frames, the times, the age, the precipice and the edge with the relentlessness of the weight and force of gravity which seems to hold you in place, pinned down, seemingly overwhelmed, calling for backup, for support, desperately searching for advice, for companionship and understanding and help. But even with these accommodations, you're on your own. Though never alone in doing so, you must fight your way forward solo onward to progress, toward providence, toward triumph over your own illusory limits, over the images of your every discouragement, your every risk, your every demon. 
to overcome your weakness, to believe in yourself enough to make it past the doubts, and to have the faith to earn the confidence in yourself. Welcome again to being alive. Thank you. Oh, yesterday was so much fun. Um, I had a block party. Yeah, I blocked 10 people on Facebook uh, and, and five on Instagram. So I'm pretty sure you guys are young. I'm pretty sure some of you are gonna agree with me that people say LOL way too much. It makes no sense anymore, right? I mean, they say stuff like, I lost my car keys, LOL. I miss you, LOL. I'm at work, I can't talk, LOL. <laughs> what, you can't talk, but you can laugh out loud? <laughs> Where the hell do you work, at a comedy club? <laughs> yeah, my friend texted me the other day, I am so sad, LOL. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, I texted him back. Well, that's called bipolar. <laughs> it's a little bit different, right? <laughs> oh, so last week, um, I went to Starbucks, and uh, when I was waiting in line for my coffee, I noticed a flyer on the wall. It said, have you seen this dog? Please call. So I called and said, no, I've never seen that dog. Uh, so, so are you guys just being honest? Sounds like you love dogs. Yeah, me too, I love dogs. I have a cute little dog. His name is Peeve. Oh, I love my pet Peeve. It's so cute. Yeah, he's got that beautiful long ears and beautiful long tail. So and in bed at night in the dark, I, can't, I can never know which side I get. You, know, you guys, for the longest time, I was sure that he has a bad breath. <laughs> <sighs> Looking back to see the roads I've traveled Took some detours just to come this far Sometimes took the road that looked so easy Always wound up being just as hard Sometimes watched with envy As my friends found great success Always got reminded It don't mean happiness Count your blessings at a time. Count your blessings, you will find. Count your blessings and you'll see. You are right where you should be. Count your blessings at a time. Count your blessings, you will find. Count your blessings and you'll see. You are right where you should be. Yeah, we, we talk about a lot of different stuff, and uh, some of it's fun, some of it is 
um, you know, like the UFO and the lizard people stuff. <laughs> um, I've heard compelling arguments for them. ASMR stands for autosensory meridian response. Uh, put simply, it's sounds that feel good. So certain people, maybe uh, you've experienced this or someone out there watching, certain times when you hear uh, soft, delicate, concentrated sounds, it could be, you know, something like the hum of an air conditioner or uh, traffic if you're like in the car, you know, that gentle motion stuff. Or it could be, uh, you know, intentional ASMR of somebody making a soft voice like that. We want to entertain you, help you think, give you free speech and whatever else that we can think of because, hey, there's unlimited possibilities for doing media. I am here at Manhattan Beach and taking it all in. Um, and in 2019, you're gonna see Nice Wonder live on the Now Man Show. That's right, live performances, the whole episode and more music stuff, surprises I can't talk about right now. And I'm looking forward to the fourth and final season of Mr. Robot with Rami Malek. That should be a wild ride. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. And looking back on 2018, uh, it was great to see Bohemian Rhapsody. And I'm so glad that it received uh, the recognition that it deserved to get, and especially Freddie Mercury himself. And let me know what you'd like to see on The Now Man Show. My email address is thenowmanshow2017 at gmail.com. And reflecting back on 2018, I hope you liked that. And I'm certainly looking forward to going forward in 2019 with more arts and entertainment content as well. So this is Nice Wonder from Manhattan Beach, California. And as always, stay present in the moment. Always. Right now. Yes. Hello, Dan. Absolutely. How are Hello. you? Hello. Start from the very beginning. Where were you born? Where are you from? What's your story? Well, I was born in Ashland, Ohio. Um, that's a real and, place, uh, right? You're not making that up. That's a real place, okay. yes. I've been a musician since I was five years old. I remember standing on a milk crate at the church pulpit next to my father, who was a reverend and church pastor, and my mother was at the piano. Uh, we were a trio, and I sang the soprano part. How's everybody doing? Thank you very much, uh, Kulax. This is great. I need love, but that's not all. Something to simulate my brain. Doesn't have to be that deep. Something to take with me in a plane. I'd like to read a book, but a song that has a hook. Travel to exotic places. I want to read a book. Well, there's always a story to find, something better of any kind.